Hi everybody, welcome to Dog Watch Cigar Radio. This is a special segment of What Else We've Been Smoking. Here with executive producer Liz. You Hi know everybody. me. So, we're going to smoke. What are we going to smoke today? We're going to smoke um, Jameson Resolution. Now this is a new cigar from Jameson Cigars. Just came out at IPCPR. The MSRP is about $7.50. It comes from the Dominican Republic, of course, and the binder is Dominican Republic Cabano, and the wrapper is Dominican Republic Negrito, for those of you who speak Spanish, and the filler is a combination of Dominican Republic and American tobaccos, which is a bit of a change-up for Jameson cigars, typically mostly Dominican Republic stuff. So it's a good looking Robusto. Mm -hmm. The label is very nice. It's black and gold and white. Now, Jameson does kind of a theme in his cigars, starting with the declaration, about our declaration of freedom to smoke and freedom to choose. And the Resolution is the next step in that. So we're going to cut these, of course. Uh, I want to smoke mine. I mean, smell it first. I want to get the aroma. Because it's kind of a, kind of a, I don't know, chocolatey or caramely aroma to me. Now I've seen some some tasting sheets that refer to a we, we always talk a lot about barnyard and of course mm -hmm. the chocolate, the caramel smells that we got. And they listed chicken coop. <laughs> now quite frankly, oh. I when I think of a chicken coop smell, it's very ammoniated. I smell chicken coop. Yeah. You and, do and not want that. It's not something I want to smell. So I think if you smell chicken coop, I think it's not a good thing in a yeah. cigar. But my initial, initial aroma to me is chocolatey. Yeah, and I, I agree that chocolatey, dark flavors, kind of a savory aroma as, as well. So we'll cut these, of course, with our wonderful polio cutters. The favorites here on Dog Watch Cigar Radio. Oh, wait. They also say, I don't know if you did this or not, but I was reading that after you cut it, you should draw... And see what, if you can... Uh, I know Dale can get pre-light draws. My palate picks up nothing. It's still uh, chocolatey to me. Light. Kind of like inhaling a Hershey's bar? Not that chocolatey. Not that chocolatey. No, okay. no. Just a, a, a subtle taste. So you want to toast the foot of your cigar. Now, there's a lot of articles out there and a lot of commentary about how to light a cigar. And, they all start with the toasted foot idea, and there's a reason for that. It helps to eliminate charring of the rest of the cigar, and it actually makes it easier when you put the cigar in your mouth and light it. And it's supposed to help it burn more evenly. And it does. I got a perfect light on mine. Now, it's, it's interesting. We're both using very similar lighters. In fact, they're the same lighter, technically. Um, both a soft flame lighter, not a jet. They work great for mm -hmm. us in the house. They're not our favorite lighters outside because they do get blown around by the wind, although they are wind resistant. But they also work great in the car because you can see the flame with your sunglasses on. A lot of jet type lighters, I have a problem seeing the flame with my sunglasses on. Mm. You don't want to burn your eyelashes off. I've actually burnt holes in the visor. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, but yeah, I get a lot of eye, eyebrow singes. That. So, what are you getting from your first? Initially, a good chocolate flavor, which I think you mm -hmm. mentioned in the pre light aroma. I'm also enjoying very much a, a leathery nuttiness undertone in it, um, almost a chocolate and almonds kind of flavor. Mm. Um, it's not uh, spicy at all, and, it, and to me, yeah, it's a muted chocolate. I, I can't discern nuttiness and that kind of stuff, but I do sense that it's not just a straight chocolatey kind of uh, taste to it, aroma. The retrohale has a real nice, slightly acidic to it, um, which I think helps kind of cleanse the palate. I'll try a retrohale. It's a bit of a stinger. Yeah, not, not too bad though. Very smooth cigar overall. It is, yeah. Um, and that's where I think the retro oil brings out some of the nuttiness. Do you think that? Yeah, I do. I definitely get some nuttiness out of it. How's your burn going? I did pretty burn good is on absolutely mine. Absolutely perfect. I, I got a little bit, but 
I have to let's compare because I don't want to out out uh, smoke, smoke you <laughs> and smoke it too fast. So yeah, the burn is good. I was going to show you a little bit of a close up here of the Resolution cigar. I'm getting not so much chocolate anymore as woodsy. Maybe that's that nutty you were referring to. Yeah, I think I, a lot of people say woodsy and I tend to think more nutty, which is just the way mm -hmm. I think of it. It's not that it's right or wrong. I mean, I'm getting a beautiful white solid ash on here. Shall we have a long ash contest? No. And this hey. time I'm smoking a little bit faster than you. I can't believe it. Maybe that's the trick. Put a camera on me and then I'll slow down smoking. I, uh, I'm also getting just a, a hint of cedar, it seems like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now that you mention it. And the, the copious amounts of smoke, as we would say on the show, but a very, not overly chewy smoke, but a, a, it has some body to it in your mouth. You mm -hmm. can feel the smoke kind of roll around in your mouth. So it has a good mouth feel, a nice body But it doesn't to coat, coat your mouth. So. It, it's not a creamy, mm -hmm. coaty kind of smoke. And it, it's not that steak heavy, chewy smoke either. I'm not sure I know what that means, but. I try to be descriptive, what can I say? I do, I do understand uh, the different smokes so that they can feel different in your mouth. To, to me, it's like if they come in and go out quick and don't leave much behind or they're in and they coat it or, you know, and I'm sure that's what you're talking about with chewy and you know, and the variations in between. I'm getting a little bit of spice in my mouth. Not a lot. Very, very smooth. It seems to be a well-balanced spice. Mm -hmm. and, and I say that because it engages all around my mouth, not uh -huh. in one particular spot. That's exactly true. I, I would agree with that totally. Usually, it's not really on my tongue either. It's more, like you said, everywhere. Yeah. Now, just to reiterate again, these are the Resolution 5x50 Robustos from Jameson Cigars, a brand new one. He just released at IPCPR this year. We've been fans of Jameson mm -hmm. for years now. We smoke the black labels, I the love red labels. the black label. Uh, the Santos de Miami is, mm -hmm. a, is a powerful smoke. I think in terms, of, in terms of pure strength, what do you think of this cigar compared, maybe compared to like the black and the red, if you can remember that as well? I think it's, uh, I don't know, if I'm becoming more attuned to smoking heavier strength cigars, but this is mild to me. This has a, it, it, I think it's a mild nicotine cigar, which is mm -hmm. great. I think when I look at a cigar, that's one of the things I want is a mild nicotine. I'm not looking for a nicotine buzz. I know I get it off of them, but I'm not looking for it. Now it's complex with how, you know, all the different flavors are kind of woven together. I'm not saying it's a one, one trick pony kind of a cigar when I say mild. Yeah, not at all. But it, it's, uh, it's not a... Heavy, but, yeah. Strength. But the flavor is very full. Is, oh, really? I, I think I the, like the flavor, but I, you know, like I said, I can't really. I think it's a full flavored cigar, mm -hmm. and and the body I think is medium to full on that. But it's because the flavor is so dominant in your mouth. Well, it's flavor, so easy to discern. Flavor, according to TU, Tobacco University, is aroma plus taste. So, Absolutely. So that would, and strength it is more the nicotine, the spiciness of it, according to the. And we certainly ascribe to that. Yes, we do. There's a, according to Miss CST, new CST over here. I'm not retro hailing anymore. I I like to enjoy my cigar without the retro. See, and I've really fallen into the habit of retro hailing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't always do it, but a lot of cigars, this one in particular, is such a pleasant addition mm -hmm. to the taste profile and to the experience that I like to retrohale it mm -hmm. almost continuously as I smoke. There are some cigars that I just absolutely can't do that with. Mm -hmm. they're, they're too powerful on the nasal passages and I can't retrohale them time after time after time. It, it would be, 
Well, to me, if I'm smoking it, if I'm enjoying it, why do I need to retrohale it? You don't. That's you all know? it takes. You want to compare them again? Okay. Because I see a considerable difference. Now, folks, this is <laughs> this is uh, absolutely amazing because normally these would be reversed. Uh huh. I smoke quickly. <laughs> I smoke fast. And maybe that's why I'm getting some of the astringency. Maybe but I'm smoking it hotter, so I'm getting a different. It definitely the temperature affects the flavor profile that you get from a cigar. Well, and you also have to take into consideration when you're reviewing a cigar, you're smoking it slower because you're thinking about it, you're talking about it. If I'm just sitting there smoking a cigar for enjoyment out by the pool or whatever, then I tend to go quickly. But now I'm, I'm, I want to think about it and talk about it so it's going slower. I'm curious to see if you notice any change as you smoke deeper into the cigar. It doesn't taste chocolatey to me anymore, but I can't put a, a note on it. There's a little saltiness. It, it definitely has a nice acidic component. Not, it doesn't stand out. Well, when you say acidic, what do you mean? One of the ways, it, acidic is kind of an anti-sweet, anti-salt flavor. It, one of the ways I can tell if a cigar has a nice little amount of acidity to it is if I continue to salivate, if it doesn't dry out my mouth, then it has just enough acidity to keep the membranes damp hmm. and draw out that saliva into my mouth. Hmm. I do get a, a, an overall, in the back of my mouth, a saltiness that I like. I like a little salt in there. Um, I'd have to say this is a, an extremely complex and well-layered cigar from Jameson mm -hmm. Cigars. I think Brad, and of course Brad uses um, the manufacturing facilities and knowledge base of Luis Sanchez at La Tradición Cubana. And this is, this you can see some of Luis in this cigar, mm -hmm. in, in the layering of the flavors and the mm -hmm. complexities that he likes to put into cigars. Right. Now, it, it is a different uh, flavor now, but I'm at a loss for words. I'm not real good at uh, defining the different flavors in a cigar. Well, I don't think, I mean, we do it on the show. Dale is particularly good at it. Mm -hmm. Craig Schneider is very good at it. And not only discerning the different flavors, but describing them. For me, though the bottom line is you don't have to be able to pick those out. I think there's the basic flavors you like to try to pick out. And you've hit on some of those. Mm -hmm. Sweet, salty, mm -hmm. savory, Dark uh, chocolate. spice, sour, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. And, and then there are those combinations of those sometimes that evoke very poignant, solid memories. Mm -hmm. And chocolate is, we all know what chocolate tastes like. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's very, very few people in the world that don't enjoy chocolate, mm -hmm. don't eat, haven't ever eaten chocolate. So it's something we can identify a particular profile well, and I of can, flavor. I can definitely tell a barnyard, uh, or to me, to me, a woodsy is like a campfire kind of uh, uh, smell or flavor. And those are memories, you know. You've been there in those positions in those places and you can kind of equate that to it. Yeah, it's... It, what is it, uh, what flavor are you getting now? It's changed. Mm -hmm. And I think the chocolate is much more subdued, if uh -huh. not gone entirely yep. at this point. you did, that's mine. But for me, it's moved into, it's not quite there yet, to more of a coffee flavor, but a lot of woodsy nuttiness mm -hmm. coming out in the cigar. Still with that well-balanced spice, all around my mouth, mm -hmm. but I'm getting a little bit less acidity now, mm -hmm. a less less of an acidic flavor. I just did a retrohale. Whew. Changed quite a bit, hasn't mm -hmm. it? The retrohale is much more powerful. I think the yeah. cigar has gotten much stronger at this point yeah. on my cigar, and I would compare it very favorably in strength with the Santos de Miami, also from Jameson, which I considered up until I smoked this cigar to be his most powerful blend. Mm -hmm. I'm getting nervous. I have to knock this ash yeah. off. I don't know if I can. Wait, let's do one more comparison. Well, you're catching up a little uh -huh, bit. Catching up. Yeah, when I did the retro hell, I almost got just a touch of... Uh, so let's see how flat your burn is now that you're an accomplished CST. Perfect. Perfect foot there. Yes, I do have a problem. Since I... Uh, tend to smoke quickly, then I, when I knock the ash off, I tend to have like a little pyramid in here where the core 
hasn't kept up with the wrapper and the binder. But this, this is good. And the reason that that's important is not for looks, but it affects the flavor mm -hmm. profile that you'll get from the cigar. The cigar was made to burn almost flat. Mm -hmm. you, you need a little bit, you're always going to end up with a little bit of a point on it, but it, they're really made to burn as flat as possible so you get all those flavors from all of the leaves at one time mm -hmm. passing through the cigar. I agree, yeah. Yes, especially since I got my certification, I'm doing much better at uh, being aware of all these things. Now, how did you see the certification process? Because you went through the whole thing. You mm -hmm. started from scratch, and, and really, up until two years ago, mm -hmm. you didn't smoke cigars. No, mm-mm. Um, well, it was, in the beginning, it was very overwhelming from, uh, from a newbie standpoint. Um, going on a cigar tourism trip was very helpful to see the whole process and kind of get an idea of what people were talking about. There's so many terms when you're new to it that it's very difficult to understand even what people are talking about and the secret of cutting and lighting and and the different uh, sizes of cigars and and then you pile onto that the process that goes into the making of a cigar. When, when you're a new smoker you tend to think in terms of uh, cigarettes, you know? I mean how complicated can it be, right? Nice. nice. Take one out of the package, yeah. fire, <laughs> and you're off and smoking. Right. And, and there's a bit of a ritual to the lighting and cutting. Now, what if, since, you've, since you're a new smoker, you've been coming up through the last, I don't even like to call you a new smoker, but you're, you have all those new experiences still relatively mm -hmm. fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've been smoking for okay. 20 years or so, and I forget what it was like before I became yes, the I master know. that I am today. What have you learned about cutting your cigar? Maybe. Oh, I've had quite a journey on that. Um, I went from having you cut it for me or somebody at the cigar store because I was it was just too much for me to getting a better idea of what it's supposed to be and cutting off the cap, <laughs> a pretty good portion, uh, to then evolving to realizing I needed to keep the cap on and so I still felt I needed to have a lot of, of area there that I could draw through. So I tended to want to have my cuts be as big as possible without getting rid of the cap. Then I went down the path where as I was doing that, I tended to get crooked and cut too much off on one side. So for a period of time, I went and got a, one of the cheap, and I, was, I always used the Palio. Um, but during this period of time, when I got off on my cuts, I went and got a, a cheap plastic cutter that had a backing to it so that you could put it right on it and you couldn't go any further down. And so then I could cut and it would be just at the right level, pretty much. And once I got into the feel of that again, I went back to the Palio and was able to control my cuts better. I just, I just kind of lost it for a while, so that helped focus. And now I've I'm at the point where I realize you don't have to have the whole end of it cut off. You can just do, you know, the smallest cut possible to get the draw through is going to be enough. So now I'm I'm at the point where I think uh, I know where the where my perfect cut is. I and I, oh, the big uh, eye opener for me was when I learned how to cut and not have the thing go springing <laughs> off onto the floor. And it was messy. I said, why do people want to do this? You know. And then uh, you showed me how to just gently lay my uh, knuckle down there in the where, where the cut was going to be and cut it and it would hold it into the cutter and then you could just drop it into the ashtray. And as long as your finger's on top of the cigar, it's not going to, you're not going to cut your finger. That's the fear people have uh, putting yeah. their finger down in that area of the yeah, cutter. Yeah, but I just, just the cutter, oh yeah, here, here's yeah. the cutter. So you can just lay this this yeah. finger down here onto the top of and the you're piece not that's cut it. sticking through, basically. Right. So it's it's above the cut line. I'm not going to cut this one, but, but on it top took me, of the cigar. Yeah, right, you so. you remember? It took me a while before I was comfortable enough to do that. There was just no way I was going to do that and cut the top of my knuckle off. I'm still getting that that slightly coffee espresso flavor, mm -hmm. very woodsy nutty that I think that's the, for me the dominant flavor at mm -hmm. this point and just enough acidity to 
I'm not craving a drink. Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here feeling dried out. No, I don't feel dried out. I get a touch of cedar still. And and I don't know if that's cedar to me or leather to you, or whatever, but it's it's not as sweet and it's not um it's not a woodsy woods. It's 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 a a particular taste to me with a little touch of cedar to it. And I think the spice has re has gone down quite a bit. I'm not getting nearly as much spice in my on Oh my yeah. As I just I was did a retro initially. hail and definitely less, much less. At the beginning the cigar had a nice retrohale with a little bit of sting to it mm -hmm. to the mid portion of the cigar which for you just was not retrohaleable. It was mm -hmm. overpowering and, and I admit it was was a bit much and now it's transformed the retrohale again to something that's a pleasant Mm -hmm. Much more pleasant. Mm -hmm. retro milder, hail. Much milder, yeah. And I get just a little sting, still that, that little bit of astringency or whatever on the tail end of the retro hail, but it doesn't stay as long. It's not mm -hmm. as prominent mm -hmm. as it was in the mid portion. Yeah, of I agree. The cigar. I would agree with that. So while we're while we're smoking some more, let me continue on my uh, my path of getting certified. So after because I want to finish yes. the story. So after we took the trip to Nicaragua on cigar tourism, then I had a much better picture. And uh, more time evolved where uh, I, had, I could look through the online information on Tobacconist University. And of course we have the book. Now what about the trip to Nicaragua mm -hmm. helped you to understand, helped you to visualize how all this stuff worked better? Well, I mean, visualize, you don't have to visualize, it's right there. The fermentation, the aging. I didn't get to see the barns where they do the, the air curing of it, but, uh, but pretty much everything else. The fermentation, the aging, the, um, the separating out the different leaves, the rolling, the cigar molds, the, um, the boxes, if they made cigar boxes. So just being able to experience mm -hmm. firsthand that mm -hmm. process helped you to understand the knowledge that Tobacconist University was trying to get oh, yeah. to soak in. Yeah, it, it made it easier to, to internalize it, basically, and understand it. So in my journey, uh, the, the final thing that I did before taking the test, I mean, between that time and the time that I took the test recently was pretty much um, learning with you and, and through smoking cigars and talking to people, you know, things that we went to just in, in terms of uh, with Dog Watch Cigar Radio and CigarMedia.tv. And so you learn a little along the way and talking to people, you pick up a lot. But the, the final thing that I did was uh, to reread the Tobacconist University book. The, right before I took the test. And you have to consider, I mean, if you're, if you're interested in taking the test, and they have a great, uh, I got the certified uh, Salesforce um, certification, but they also have a consumer one, and if you're a member of uh, CRA, it's a reduced price. So that's something you might want to look into if you're a consumer and you want to become certified. But basically, I read the book and you have to think of it like it's a course that you're taking. If you talk to a lot of different people, different people have different takes on how things are done in the cigar industry. And they may even do it differently, depending upon who you're talking to. Um, but if you're going to go for the certification, you have to remember it's a course, whether the information is online or from the book. So read that information, and the questions are based on that information, not what somebody else has told you. So if you want to be certified, study the things that come in the course. If you read the book right before and you have a general understanding of, of uh, how the whole thing works, I, I don't think you'll have a problem. Uh, it is important to, to study a little bit about dates, some of the major dates in the history, about um, the uh, tasting, the things that uh, in, that are involved when you're reviewing and tasting a cigar. And then there are chapters in the book that tell you all that stuff. Uh, there's some in there about pipes. You need to know something about 
the di different pipes and how they're made up and how the tobacco is different. Uh, it's, it's really a very good informative course and when you get certified then you can know that you know you do have an overall general knowledge of the topic. Very well rounded. Yeah exactly very well rounded. Now I, I want to I have a question I want to ask you about that but first I just got into perhaps what the last third of this cigar and the taste changed dramatically for me. I got into all of a sudden I got a very dominant sour fruit flavor that's very enjoyable but very different from what I've gotten in the rest of the cigar. Mm -hmm. Let's compare how far you are. I'm oh, quite a bit further. Man, I can't believe I've this. I've taken off because you were talking. Oh, because I was talking. And I wasn't. I was and listening. And notice it's smoking. still lit even yeah. after all that talking. Which I think is another great characteristic of a quality cigar. It, it doesn't mean it's a bad cigar if it doesn't do that, mm -hmm. but it certainly improves a cigar that you can take a minute or two minutes to talk, to set the cigar down, to have a drink of your favorite libation, whatever that might be, and pick the cigar up and it's still lit. Mm -hmm. Now the question I was going to ask you, two of them, at what point do you take the, lab the band off? I always call them a label, I get in trouble for that. At what point do you take the band off the cigar? I wait till it's uh, right about where you are there. I, I mean, it's, I don't want to forget about it and have it start burning. So I, when it gets to be maybe half an inch away, quarter of an inch away, I'll take it off. Sometimes I take it off right away when I start smoking a if cigar. If it's easy to take off, I yeah. will. But generally, it needs the heat to get closer to it to come off easier. Very good. Yeah, that's a, that was the point I wanted to make. It, a lot of times, let, smoking down closer to it, that, that heat will yes. loosen the glue. I don't want to tear the uh, wrap the wrapper yeah. by taking it off and having it be too tight, having it sticking on the wrapper too tightly. Yeah, I've destroyed many a beautiful cigar band by just having to tear them off to avoid hurting them. And sometimes, I mean, y you do. You have to do that because it gets close enough and that's, that's all and you can do. And you're not ready to stop, so yep. you don't have much of a choice. I was wondering what aspect of cigars did you find the most challenging? And I think you do still find it challenging. It, I don't know, I, it's like I have a mental block there. The, the different shapes of cigars, the Panatella, the Torpedo, the um, Salomon, the uh, Pre Prefito, Pre Preferido, Pre whatever that one is, um, Corona, Robusto. I mean, to get an image, of, you know, I mean, from the beginning, when, when I first started smoking, we'd go into a cigar shop and you'd say, oh, that's Robusto, oh, that's this. And I still can't do that. I, I don't know what it's going to take for me to be able to just kind of look at a cigar and say, oh, that looks like uh, Corona. Or I'm pretty good at Lanceros, and I think I'm better at Churchill's now. And, and, uh, but it doesn't come easy for me. Well, what I see you doing that I think is a very good technique to do that is, Every cigar you pick up to smoke, you try to identify it, mm. what that size is. And that gives you a real good idea. And a Parejo is a straight-sided cigar. It's the normal cigar you see all the time. Mm -hmm. And a Figurado is any cigar that has a unique shape, mm -hmm. whether it's pointed on one end or both ends. Um, what's a Vitola then? It's a Vitola, exactly. And a Torpedo. Now wait a minute. That's, I said, what's a Vitola? Oh, what's a Vitola? Their word for Vitola it. is the category okay. that defines shape. Okay. So, so you go Vitola and you get Preferito, Pana. Panatella. See what I mean? And, and then underneath Dale, that, you get into the different yeah. Robusto and, and Salomon. And, so this is a good time to talk about how to relight your cigar. Okay. Because you're doing exactly the very first step, which is get rid of as much ash as you can. It's Some hard. people even go to the extreme of cutting the end off again. I don't, I'm too lazy, uh, but I do try to knock off as much ash as mm -hmm. possible. And the idea too is you don't want that char flavor coming through. So it's already burned, it's, it's not hot anymore. Well, it's, I'm sure it's still warm, but it's, it's not burning anymore, so get rid of it. The ash and the char. Now, after when you light this, will you then purge as you light to get rid of some of that? I never thought about that. I never do that. I always just light it and 
puff it. That's a nice purge right there. Yeah, purge is... Now, some people will purge... Blow through. ...continuously as they go through their cigar. I'm not big on that. I, I don't... I'm just lazy, I guess. I'm not sure. Well, how do you relight your... I toast it first, and, and if it's close to the end, I just toast it. If, it. if it's far enough away... I'm lazy. Until it gets really short and dangerous for me to have the flame that close to my face, and when, it, when it gets short, I'll, to I'll hit it first, especially around the wrapper with the lighter and then put the fire to it up by my face. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I do just like you did. I, I put it in my mouth and I light it and draw on it. I always toast it first, even then. Uh, I think that's a very good habit to get it. Mainly because I, I think, again, that helps it pick up that even burn. Looks like you did a good job lighting it. You're getting good smoke out of it. And, you know, if your burn gets a little bit crooked, don't get too excited about touching it up right away. Mm -hmm. If you, you can get into this cycle of touch-ups where you're touching it up all the time and it never does get straight because it's always getting touched up. Yeah, one side goes quicker than Yeah, that. a lot of times the cigar will even itself out if you just smoke gently on it. I mean, mine's burning really straight. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good this is burning. And it's got just a little bit of the oils bubbling up at the burn. I, uh, I am getting a little of that sour fruit that you mentioned now. Yep, that's about where I got into it, was there? I don't know if it's sour fruit or, a, or a papaya or I don't know, but it's, yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, you can, throw, you can throw almost any fruit in yeah, there that you can think yeah. of. Well, sour fruit has a negative connotation, you know, but uh, it's not, that, it's just not a sweet fruit. It's more like I would think of like a papaya. Yeah. See, it doesn't, it's not negative for me because I love things like sour cherry and sour green apple. I used to love the Jolly Rancher candies, mm -hmm. which were sour fruits. Mm -hmm. And that was, so that's what I kind of think of when I say sour fruit. Yeah. It's not really a negative thing. Yes, I like this cigar. Yeah, and with a price point of $7.50, MSRP, that means you're going to be able to get them discounted for a little bit less than that at a box price. You know, you'll get a 10, 20 percent discount on a box if you buy a box. But I truly think that Brad Jameson, Brad Jameson, Brad Mayo at Jameson Cigar. It's such a difference when you smoke a good cigar. It, and, it is. And because I tend to smoke so quickly, or, and I smoke four or five cigars a day now, I, I don't want to spend that. the money. I see you smoke four cigars and watching hey, TV. Excuse me. I don't want to spend the money on, on ex, you know, cigars that spent that even at six dollars. You know, I don't want to spend that money. So I tend to get cheap cigars, budget cigars, smoke them all the time. But now I have a good excuse to smoke some good ones. When we were at IPCPR, I loved it because everything I smoked was like, oh, this is so good, you know. Quit blowing smoke over here. Sorry. <laughs> now, Brad also makes a really nice bundled cigar, the Southbound, which is available from Charmed Leaf and the Jameson Cigars website as well, that is a very tasty, very nicely done cigar I'll I'll in a bundle. It. I'll have to try We've it. tried them, and you liked them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I know it, it may not have stood oh, out Southbound. for you. Oh, Southbound. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, so that's a real nice there's, cigar. There's one by um, Jesus that comes through one cigar shop that has a similar name, Latitude, so and so. Yeah, the 83 North 29 Yeah, yeah, West, I tend to, like Southbound, that. to me, they're both kind of like, you know, South, lazy environment, not lazy, uh -huh. but tropical. So a I tend, laid back. Laid back, that's the And word. we are definitely more laid back here in the South. Yes, we are. We but really yeah, are. so I, I tend to confuse those two in the names. I'm taking off my label. Look how it came off very easily. Resolucion. I don't know. I guess you can't see it from there, but it's a very nice label. Right? Yeah. Without. <laughs> and that's why you had a smoking room. The men would retire to the smoking room, put on their smoking jackets, have a cigar, and they could take those off, come back out. They didn't smell like smoke. Mm -hmm. That was the theory. I, I'm not sure. You need a smoking bib, though. I need a bib. Bib to catch it in it pockets for the cutter, the lighter, and uh, it has to be non-flammable, and then all the ashes can fall on the bib. Just like lob when you eat lobster. Same thing. And you can wear it in the car. You could you could wear it when you sit there, watch TV at night, when you forget the ash is burning. Yeah. You know another good thing for the smoking bib? If you could make a miniature vacuum 
And then when you miss the bib and it hits the floor, shh, back in there. Actually, I know exactly where I could get one of those. I know where I could get one of those. But now I'm back to, as you can see, copious amounts of smoke floating in the air, the ambiance of the smoking room. This again is the Resolucion, a 5x50 Robusto from Jameson Cigars, a mm -hmm. Dominican Republic product. Very nicely done, I, I think. I think it's a hit, I like it. And again, it's, it's hard, people ask me too, can you recommend cigars for somebody new to, to smoking? And it's harder for me now because I do tend, to, I, I've n notched it up a little, I do tend to smoke medium or to full now instead of the milder ones. So, I mean, I think this is very mild. I think that a new smoker could smoke this, but again, I, now I don't think you say it's complex and deep and so probably not, so. Well, no, I've, I was smiling because when I met Brad at, at IPCPR and we were talking about this cigar and he gave me one to try, and he said, what do you think of it? And I said, oh, it's medium bodied. Mm -hmm. He goes, wow, I think that's a stronger cigar than the Santos Miami. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And I thought, well, I haven't, I recovered nicely. I said, well, I haven't had a Miami for a while, so maybe it is. But I do too, I th you know, I think the idea of mild, medium, and full is all in the beholder. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what you perceive the strength of the cigar. Yeah, I'm starting to think though, if, if you want to ask somebody you know, what should I smoke? I'm a new smoker. You almost have to go to another new smoker and say, what have you smoked that you like? Or I need to go back to my notes back, what I liked at the very beginning. That's what you have to do. You have to kind of go back to your roots. And that's why one of the reasons why I continue, although I love doing it, but I also continue to smoke cigars across mm -hmm. the whole spectrum from mild to full. And quite honestly, there's some some full-bodied cigars that are too much for me, even at this stage, so I don't smoke them very often, if at all, and some mild cigars that I find to be tasteless. But not all mild cigars are that way. I've had some mild cigars that I think have a lot of flavor, a lot of character, mm -hmm. but they're a mild hit to the palate, so they're a little... This cigar is starting to stick in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Coating know, in the back. It's gonna have an aftertaste, yeah. Some of the first cigars that I liked were uh, the Elogios. The I like the Guerrero. And that's not a mild cigar. But, uh, yeah, but uh, but it was uh, a Lancero. So I don't know if that made a difference. But yeah, that one a Guillermo Leon. I like the Brundel Ray. Was it the Gold Label? I believe it was the Gold Label. Those and were Brundel Ray. I I think is much more of a mild to medium cigar. Mm-hmm. The Elogios, I think, are very much medium. We've got, I know we have a Brundel Ray that we're going to review in another, yes. another video. Yeah, uh, we're going to so be doing the Brundel Rays. We're going to be doing the, the new Foundry cigars mm -hmm. from General Cigar because a lot of people are very interested in that cigar. That may be the next one we do next week. Yeah, that'll be fun. Steampunk. What I, are you tasting now? I'm still just getting those. I, this cigar actually is, is coming to the point for me that it's saying I'm done. The flavors are starting to flatten out. I'm getting, uh, I'm get, starting to get a little bit of the the tars and stuff in the flavor. So the the flavor profile started to flatten out at this point for mm -hmm. me. At this point, I think the cigar is reaching the point where it's ready to put down. Not for me. What are you getting out of it? Well, I'm still getting that that uh, fruitiness. Um, I would say that's that's where I'm still at right now, that fruitiness of it. And the retrohale's got noticeably more astringent. It's my retrohale is a little bit it more just made astringent. My eyes water. But it's it's not painful astringent, so that last one was yeah. <laughs> your eyes are yeah. It kinda made my eyes water. When you can feel it in your eyes, that to yeah. me is astringent. To me to me it's when you do that retrohale and your nose burns. I hate that. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. And I learned, though, that it had a lot to do with how I was doing my retrohales, too. I, if you let it, uh, you can either add a little, let, let a little air in with it, but I found, uh, Dale gave me this tip about just let it rest in your mouth a minute before you go into the nose, to like, and it's uh, cooler. So it, that doesn't, uh, so you get a, a, a more of a sense of what the actual smoke is instead of the now heat. That, that retrohale was much more pleasant that time. I must have had one that was a little overly hot. Mm -hmm. 
glad I could share my hint. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, somebody was telling me about how do you draw some air in, too, to, so it's in your mouth with it, and that cools it down. But it's hard for me to do that. I tend to, as I'm drawing in, I'm smoking out. So it, I, it's, it's like I can't chew gum and walk at the same time, something like that. But I do find just by holding it in my mouth a little bit and then going exhaling it out through my nose and then it's cooler. The more you retrohale, the better you get oh. at it. It's, a, it's an acquired ability. And I find now that I can both exhale and retrohale at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's almost cases. like when you learn to drive a car, you have to think about every step, every everything, you know, if you're doing a gear push in and, and change the gears and that kind of stuff. But then it becomes second nature and you're not thinking about it anymore. It's the same thing with retrohale. I agree. And But, you know, Again, I very rarely do it because it doesn't really add to my enjoyment of the cigar. I don't, I don't need to say, oh, when you retrohale, you also get these flavors, because I'm not going to be there retrohaling the whole cigar. Yeah. I enjoy it for what I get when I smoke it. And, and I use the retrohale to help identify the flavors in the cigar, because mm -hmm. for me, it really brings out some flavors. And yeah. sometimes after I retrohale and get the flavors, then the flavors become more prominent in my mouth as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And honestly, when I'm smoking, unless I'm consciously doing a review, I'm not retaining anything about the cigar except am I enjoying it or not. Yeah, and I don't think you should. Mm -hmm. I think the key, we do it, it's something we've done for mm -hmm. a long time now, we do it to help share with other people, but right. it's, cigar smoking for me still is just that singular act of enjoying and, and focusing on the single cigar. If you find that identifying the different flavors and being able to discern them adds to your enjoyment of the cigar, then do it. You know, that's really what it's all about. But at all times, I think one of the things you have to keep in mind is respect the cigar. These are, cigars are really amazing little works of art. And they're one of the very few things other than food that when we consume them, when, when we get the enjoyment from them, especially from an artistic standpoint, the enjoyment we receive destroys the object of our enjoyment. Mm -hmm. With a cigar, it's in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that personally I enjoy about cigars. I like that fact of being in the moment of the cigar. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to add a little philosophical thought. To yeah, this. you couldn't go without that, I know. Okay, well, I think we're pretty much to the end. So our final recommendations on this cigar? I, I would definitely, yes. Thumbs up. Recommend it. I enjoy it. Yeah, we like these cigars. I would buy it. We're going to buy it. Mm -hmm. They are should be on retailer shelves now by the time you see this. And we want to thank you for being with us as we enjoy the Jameson Resolucion 5x50 Robusto.